everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about making and selling candles. And I just want to apologize for the sound of my voice if it gets a little bit more congested throughout this video, um, just because I am slightly congested. So I apologize about that. But this video is essentially just a little bit of a celebration just because um, Memory Box Candle Co. turned two yesterday which was very exciting. So March 30th, 2020 is when I opened up for business and it is now March 30th, 2022. Um, and that's very exciting. Um, so today's video, I thought that I would kind of take you back a little bit on some history and kind of sharing with you the process of how I got to where I am today. Um, I'm gonna take you all the way back to high school. And I also, think that it's very interesting looking back and seeing how I've changed as a person as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the story. So when I was growing up, mainly when I got to high school, I actually really didn't like business. Um, and I say this in a broad way because uh, it was mainly just what I would see visually as what business was. So some of my friends and their parents, I just, I didn't like the way that they acted. I just thought that business people were just really cocky and would just stand around in suits and talk about how much money they made. And I just was not about that at all. So it's really interesting <laughs> seeing how my perspective on business has changed in general. And of course, I know there's so many different kinds of business. Um, but what I thought when I was in high school and what I thought that I really wanted to do was something in social work or like being a teacher or something like that. So um, throughout high school and into college, I changed my major a ton. Um, I wanted to be an English teacher. I wanted to be a therapist. And I also wanted to be a physical therapy assistant. So kind of in that same realm of just wanting to help people is kind of what I always wanted to do, work with people kind of one-on-one -on -one and also help people. Um, and what I had noticed about myself just in general when I was younger was because I never really did anything challenging, I never um, did any sports, I never did Girl Scouts, I never went to camp, I never did anything that was kind of out of my comfort zone, that really translated and I wasn't able to hide behind that anymore as soon as I got into the real world and got jobs and had to go through challenging situations. It just affected me really, really, um, it affected me really immensely. I just took things really hard and I had a hard time kind of getting over certain situations and having to get through challenging situations. And to me, challenging situations was simply just learning a job and getting frustrated that I wasn't learning fast enough and what if I don't remember and what if I ask stupid questions and all these what ifs and all these things that was challenging to me. And as a kid, I would just rather give up on it than trying to go through those really awful anxiety inducing feelings that I would rather just walk away from it and not have to do it. Um, and that was something that I noticed about myself looking back on my previous jobs that I had. So before I started my candle business, I had worked at Jamba Juice while working or while going to school part-time. And I also worked at a place called European Wax Center uh, part-time while also going to school as well. So Jamba Juice was shortly after I moved. So I, after high school, I moved away from the house that I had lived in all of my life. So the town that I lived in, I never moved at all as a kid. I stayed in the same house, the same town, went to the same you know schools that were in a, I don't know, like a 10 mile radius. And um, I was very, I wasn't sheltered, but I was more sheltered than other people, I think, in the sense of um, I was very emotional. I would cry. I'd go to my mom, you know, all those kind of things. And just, again, never having to get out of my comfort zone. And um, what I had noticed was when I was working at these places, I really never wanted to grow in the 
positions and the potential positions around me. So I never wanted to take a manager position or I just always was very comfortable being where I was. And if there were other people wanting to take those positions and take on those responsibilities, it was mainly the responsibility that just absolutely terrified me, which is just looking back, it's, I don't know, it's silly because it's like life is all about responsibilities. And I think that that's the main thing is taking on more responsibilities responsibility um, was terrifying for me. So um, what I had really kind of struggled with was feeling inadequate because of this, feeling like I there's something wrong with me because I'm not wanting to pursue these you know, big goals and these things that other people are wanting to pursue to make more money. I have always been somebody who's wanted to be happier than making more money. So if making more money means that I'm miserable, I didn't ever want that. So I had been working at Jamba Juice for maybe about a year before I quit and went to work for European Wax Center. And I ended up staying at European Wax Center for about six years. Loved it, uh, great people, and I just really enjoyed um, the environment and kind of the flexibility of it with being able to still go to school and work there and I made more money. So, you know, it was kind of a happy medium with that um, because I knew deep down that I wasn't able to stay at Jamba Juice long term. Um, I know this is kind of contradictory to what I was just saying because I was talking about how money didn't really matter to me, but when you're only making about $400 a month, you kind of have to start thinking about going somewhere else. Um, so I kind of had to go work for somewhere else just because I wasn't able to, you know, make my car payment and pay for gas, which is pretty much the only bills I had at that time. Um, so during that time of transitioning over to European Wax Center, um, I really had that struggle again. I actually almost quit because the challenge of learning something new and being in that anxiety position was so difficult, but I had my mom and uh, Chris and my best friend kind of all telling me to stay and be able to get through it and it'll get easier. And I just changed my mindset and it did get easier. And I'm so happy that I stayed because that really did help me out a lot. I learned a lot working there. Um, but I actually had still gone to school during this time up until about 2016. So the end of 2016 is kind of where my life completely took a turn. Um, I ended up finding a YouTube video and it was talking about how to resell designer jeans on eBay. And I found it absolutely fascinating. I thought it was the coolest thing ever that you were able to go to a thrift store, purchase these items, and then resell it for a profit. And the girl on there was like, I would make hundreds of dollars a month doing this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that's crazy. This is so cool. And I remember just immediately going out and purchasing some jeans, not knowing what I was buying, what I was doing, and then trying to list them on eBay. And it was just not that easy. Um, I kind of got started with that and then I would slowly learn more and learn about brands and learn about pricing and how to look things up on the app. And uh, little by little, I was growing my little eBay side business. And it intrigued me enough and brought out this passion in me that I had never felt in my whole life. And um, I actually ended up uh, taking a break from college for that next semester. I had signed up for classes and I actually ended up getting my money back because I was like, I, I can't do this. I, I don't know what I'm doing here and nothing has given me as much passion as how I feel about this right now. And trying to explain that to my dad was a little bit difficult, but he was great and understood that, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Um, so I started building up my eBay business and um, I actually had made some eBay uh, YouTube videos. So this channel that you're watching right now used to be called Sweet Girl Seller. 
and it was my eBay reselling business channel. And I actually do still have some OG eBay subs. So if you are here watching this video, make sure to comment down below and let me know. I always love when you guys let me know that you've been here since the eBay days, cause that is like, that was a long time ago. So that's really cool. Um, but I actually ended up doing eBay for about three years or so. And eBay was really one of the only things that I had found that actually made me money, but it was a lot of work. It was, it was a lot of work. Um, going to the thrift stores, being around all like the dirty clothes all the time. I would go to like the outlets. So it was like these big bins full of clothes and I would just sit there or not sit there. I would stand there digging through them for hours. And a lot of times I could only go a couple hours before being like, okay, I have to go home. I do not feel the motivation to be here any longer. And I would go home, you gotta wash the clothes and then you have to set up the little photography setup. So I would be taking pictures of these clothes, measuring them, creating the listings and also creating the inventory. So all of this that I had learned from eBay was very interesting to me because I learned about photography. I already had photography lights, backdrops. Um, I had learned about you know listing descriptions. I had learned about pricing, um, trying to get a profit, and all of these things that I had learned. Um, you know, like the the inventory software of creating that kind of really translated really well into my candle business. So um, I always find it really interesting how all of these little things that I did right before getting to my candle business really helped me in my candle business. So I learned everything about shipping, um, about shipping labels and how to ship things in the cheapest way, all from eBay. Everything that I had learned was all from eBay. So transitioning into my candle business was like, kind of a breeze because I was already super familiar with all of that. But also during the time of reselling on eBay, I never stopped doing that business, but I did get distracted. So I've talked about this before and I'll keep this kind of short, but I really fell into the whole um, like, make money online niche of all of these gurus on YouTube. You've probably seen ads before pop up, like give me 15 seconds and I'll tell you how to make four thousand million dollars in the next two hours whatever it is i don't know it drives me crazy because it's like it's never that easy but i being a 22 year old girl thought that i was able to be a gajillionaire in the next five years and that's all i wanted to do was just make as much money as possible i didn't care what i had to do and so i tried amazon fba i did shopify drop shipping i did print on demand um, so all these things that i've kind of had experience with in the past that i completely failed at i mean miserably failed at but i learned a lot you know i learned how to create a shopify store so when i had my when i started my candle business and eventually started my shopify store i was already very familiar with it um, on how the back end ran um, i knew uh, when it came to you know amazon fba how to contact people on alibaba to get things shipped over so i, so I was already pretty comfortable with doing that um, when I've had to, you know, contact people from Alibaba. So that wasn't something that I was nervous about. Um, so it's again, very interesting. All these little things kind of added up together for my business now. Um, but I actually, uh, had gone through that whole process of failing at all of those businesses. And then I, actually went back to eBay. Everything always went back to eBay because that was always something that was kind of my ground foundation with everything. And the only thing that I actually saw that was making me money. And Chris never saw that money ever. He never saw that money because it was just going back into the business. So I would actually just have that money in my PayPal account. And then I would use that money to then purchase more clothes to then make more money. But now we are going to fast forward to the winter of 2018. So during this time, Chris and I had moved out into our apartment and we had been here a few months. And to put it, I mean, bluntly, we did not have a lot of money. So any kind of Christmas presents or for my sister, her birthday is on December 6th. I knew that I, you know, we couldn't afford to purchase any gifts for anybody. So I really wanted to make presents that year for everybody. And this is something that I wish I remember 
seeing an article or watching a YouTube video. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but something inspired me to make a candle for my sister for her birthday. And I went to Hobby Lobby, got their wax, their soy wax and their wicks, I think. I used a mason jar, I made two candles for her. And funny enough, I actually used good fragrance oil for my very first candles I ever made. Um, I used Virginia Candle Supply fragrance oils because I had looked on eBay because I was an eBay person. So I was looking up candle fragrance oils and Virginia Candle Supply was on there. So I purchased a couple scents, made her some candles. I had so much fun with it. And at that time I labeled the candles as Sweet Girl Candles because my eBay business was Sweet Girl seller. So uh, I really had a lot of fun with that. And um, I also actually, in the winter of 2018, I made candles for all of my coworkers. So we were doing a Secret Santa gift exchange at work and I decided to use the little get to know me cards that everybody filled out. Um, I used the scents that they liked to be able to tailor what kind of candles they would like. So that was the first time I went to California Candle Supply and the very first time that I used Soy 10. So I actually went in there looking for coconut wax, I think. And then the guy at the front um, asked me some questions, I can't remember. And then he said, you'll like Soy 10. So um, so I said, okay, I'll try it. And I'm so happy they did because that just, you know, kind of started everything. Um, but I got some scents. I got some little tins. I got my soy tin and I just made a bunch of candles and all my coworkers absolutely loved them. They were super cute. They had their names on them. I designed the labels on them and it was a lot of fun. And looking back now, I didn't test any of them. So I have no idea how they burned. But of course, at the time, I had no idea that you should be testing candles before giving them out to people. They did have warning labels though, so I guess that was a win on that part. Um, but I think that I may have played around with a couple more candles, I can't remember, but I do remember feeling extremely overwhelmed by the fragrance and just, I stopped altogether until the following fall when my manager at the time had texted me asking me to, she wanted to buy a pumpkin candle for me. And um, so I kind of, you know, brought out all the candle supplies and I made a couple different Christmassy candles and I had a lot of fun with it and brought it into work and my coworkers wanted to buy them and that kind of started everything for the business. And it's so interesting thinking back now that I don't know if I would have started this candle business if she hadn't texted me asking me for that candle. So I kind of, you know, thank her for that because it's so funny how life works and how things work out because again, I thought that I wouldn't be able to do this candle business because the fragrances was so overwhelming for me. And that's when, if you go back on the first video on this channel, I'm actually outside on my balcony because I realized that if I made candles outside on my balcony, then I didn't have the overwhelming scent, you know, inside of the house. And of course, then I learned a lot more about temperature control and how that comes into play when it comes to candle making. And now I just open the windows and wear my respirator and I'm totally fine. But at the time, learning about the, um, the little portable burner that I could take outside and make candles outside, it was like it sparked this joy of, oh my gosh, I can do this. Like I can actually make candles. And it brought so much joy into my life. And it's, it, it's seriously like looking back on everything, I'm like, this was totally meant to be. Like looking back on all of the things that I failed on, but everything that I failed with, I learned something and that all gathered that information to put into my candle business. So that's why whenever there's people that they're they're frustrated with their candle business or or something's not going right or it doesn't feel right or whatever it is, I always think like, well, maybe it's not meant to be either right now or it's just meant to be a stepping stone for something else because I had failed so many times in so many of the other businesses that I had done, but nothing had given me the kind of passion and joy that I genuinely felt 
with making candles and selling them and being like, wow, like I handmade this. This wasn't just something that I was, you know, having a drop shipping business from a random piece of jewelry, you know, from China that's being drop shipped to somebody that I don't know. And I'm not gonna have that connection with that product at all. It's just gonna be, you know, for the money. So it, it's just, it's really cool looking back on it. And it's crazy to think that it's been two years. It has been two years. And um, yeah, I'm just so immensely grateful for everybody that follows me on this journey and if you've listened to the story all the way through I appreciate every single one of you for listening to this story um, but that is essentially how I got to where I am right now um, it was a lot of trial and error a lot of failed businesses a lot of challenges and now that I look back on everything I'm like wow business and having your business is all about challenges and getting through obstacles. I am still weekly getting through challenges and obstacles and things that I don't understand and I'm trying to figure out. And if I were to just give up, I would never be where I am right now. So I am so grateful, proud of myself for continuing going through all of it, even though you get through the anxiety and you get through all of it. So hopefully this can be helpful to any of you that had a similar experience that I did of growing up as a kid, just you know, not wanting to get out of your comfort zone and now you're in business and you're like, oh my gosh, like I have to get out of my comfort zone in order to grow my business. So I hope that this can be inspiring for some of you. Um, I appreciate all of you for listening to today's video. If you have any questions, um, leave them in the comment section below. If you like today's video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Erica Marie Morris, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.